So whenever you're meeting with these potential clients, right, and you're having that appointment and you're getting to that end piece and it's kind of awkward, right, because you're sitting there and, you know, you're kind of, oh, we're getting to that end, right? You know, are you going to get a new client? Are they going to say no? Are they going to reject you? Are they going to reject you right now? Are they going to say they like it, they want it, they need it? Are they going to say, mm, I need to check with three other people? All right, you're kind of getting closer to that moment. And, you, you know, every sort of little emotion that you have inside of you is sort of pulling you to not do the thing that is going to get you the best outcome. And it's pulling you towards, oh, you know, I just, oh, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just send you, I'll, I'll just send you an invoice, right? Or I'll just send you an engagement letter. Oh, well, why don't you just send me your, your QuickBooks file and I'll take a look at that. Or why don't you send me your, your prior your tax returns? I'll take a look at that. Just send that to me and then we'll go from there, right? And... You know, it's interesting because you get to that end point, you put in all that work, all that conversation, and then you sort of sabotage your ability to get the yes. And if you're watching this video right now, my guess is that if you've done that, you probably had people where, you know, you send that invoice, you send that engagement letter, and in your mind, you even closed the, the sale, right? You got the client. But then you're sitting, right? You're checking, let me check here. Okay, let me go, hang on. I'm just gonna refresh my email, hang on. No, I didn't, okay, let me, hang on. Maybe see if I can refresh it again here. Oh, no, no. I did send him an email. Oh, I didn't, didn't hear from him tonight, didn't hear from him tomorrow. The next day, the next day, right? And they ghosted you. And, you know, that happens to you so many times. It happened to me dozens and dozens of times when I first started on business. It happens to you so many times, and then eventually you say, I can't do this anymore. I've gotta find a different way to do this, right? because you, you don't want to put yourself in that position. And so what do you do? What do you do? And I spoke to a client of mine. Actually, he was thinking about working with us. He would do a presentation first in sort of a speaking event, and then he would have a 50-minute consultation with them, and then another 50-minute consultation with them. And then he would send them an agreement and oh, hope that they sign, right? So he would do three hours, one hour in a group setting, two hours one-on-one -on -one looking over their, their materials before he would even send them an agreement, send them an engagement letter or an invoice. And even then they wouldn't sign, right? And what you've got to understand is this is, this is crazy. I mean, you're giving, you, 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 those meetings are valuable, those interactions are valuable, especially if you're running them the right way. Now, you might not be, and maybe your meetings with clients aren't as valuable right now as they could be, but you want to make them valuable. Your time is valuable in and of itself, getting your insight, getting your analysis. For you, it might be second nature, but for this client, it could be related to one of the darkest and biggest problem areas of their life, right? I mean, finances, money, taxes, accounting, there could be some serious issues going on. And so you've got to value that time, and you don't want to have three of those meetings before you even ask somebody, because... Then you've got this huge sales process. Oh my gosh. So it was interesting because I spoke with this individual and he was thinking about working with me and we had our appointment, right? And we went through, I, I went through 300 slides with him about what it is to work with us and everything. And then at the end, he said he wanted to talk it over with his wife and go through the process. And, you know, we have a whole process we do to deal with those kind of objections, but we determined at the end, it made the most sense for him and his business to have a discussion with his wife, get her on board for them to be able to come on as a team together in the business and, and in their personal life and all that. And so he said, yep, I can definitely make a decision by X date, right? Yesterday. And so I talked to him yesterday and he said, well, I need to kind of work through my process and you got to give me some more time and I got to... You know, and he said all these things that, you know, really are just um, air. But here's the key, right? His number one problem is that his sales process is too long. And I told him at the end of that meeting, I said, you know, man, here's the thing. Like, I mean, obviously, if we were to work together, I mean, working with me is not cheap. It's not free, right? I mean, it's, it's a big investment. Um, we put a lot of time, energy, and effort in working with people, but it is a big investment. And I said, I don't think I would feel comfortable with us going forward at this point if you were to come back in a day or two days or three days, right? 
Because the problem is, is that, and this is what I told him, I said, you want your clients to sign up with you on the first meeting. And that's the reason you're joining with me is to shorten your sales process from three meetings down to one. Okay. But we had our first meeting, which is where we normally make a decision. You didn't want to make a decision then. Okay, great. So then we had our second meeting. Okay. And actually he had a one meeting before me, right? So he's actually on his third meeting. Um, and he still didn't want to make a decision. And I said, if you won't make a decision after three meetings, but you want your prospects to make a decision after one meeting, I said, I can already tell you right now, even if you come back and you work with me, it will not work. It will not work. Why won't it work? And this is a key point for any of you out there that have struggled with the end of this call, the end of these conversations, sending out engagement letters, sending out invoices and doing the hope and the pray method. Oh, please, please come back, right? The reason why is because if he expects other people to treat him a certain way, but he won't treat people that way, there's an incongruence inside of him, right? He's expecting other people to do things for him that he's not willing to do for other people. And so what will end up happening is like he'll get on the calls and he'll just fall back into the same habits because he's not at the point where he realizes how bad this problem is, right? It's the golden rule, right? Treat others how you want to be treated. One of my mentors told me, you know, buy the way that you want to sell and sell the way you want to buy. So you have to be a great buyer if you want to be a great seller. I'm a great buyer. I see something of value, pop. Sometimes I'll just send an email and send the money. I don't even need to talk to the person because I can already tell I need that, I want that, boom. I don't even need to waste your time with the call, let's do it. And so when I see something of value, I will let the money rush out of my hands because I wanna be able to let it rush into my hands when it's warranted, when there is value there. But I told him, I said, you know, man, I just don't know if it would even work. And so, you know, you know it was interesting because um, I ended up, rejecting him at that point. And I think it was the right thing to do. And I, even if he came back today, we would say no, because I don't think we could help him. And then when we, when, what happens with us, like we bring somebody on, we dedicate all these resources. If we already know we can't help them, like, like I'm not going to bring a plumber on board to work with us in the way we've structured our business right now. Like if somebody's a plumber, they have zero tax and accounting experience. We've totally changed our business now where we work with people that already have experience already in the industry and take them to another level. We used to do more starters, uh, you know, years ago, but in the middle of last year, we really switched our whole company. And so if you're having that problem, the question is, how do you buy? Who are you stringing along right now? And if you're grinding people down, like I had a friend of mine would go down to the beaches in Mexico and he would just grind these guys down, right? They're charging like $6 for beads, right? We were talking about beads, right? Beads, $6 beads. This guy was doing fine. He's grinding them down, $4, he's going to $2, right? If you're grinding people down on the beaches of Mexico to save $4, but then you think you can go back to the United States or wherever you live and you can command a high-end price for a high-end service on the first call, you got another thing coming. And so if you're having a problem with that, I would say, number one, are you actually providing value on those calls? Are those calls valuable in and of themselves? If they are, do not give away more than one. And if you have to do the second one, the second one ain't a value call. The second one's a check-in call. I mean, that's a make a decision call. And if they don't want to make a decision after that, you got, you got to cut it off. You got to cut it off. And if they want to come back, they better be begging because they've already treated you in a way that shows they're not going to be the best client. The best clients make a decision quickly. The best clients pay up front. The best clients pay in full. The best clients are grateful. The best clients refer you out to other people. The best clients sing your praises. The best clients are amazing contributors to every team member in your company. They treat your team members and your employees with respect. They treat you with respect. They do what they're supposed to do early and up front. Those are what the best clients do. But when somebody's already showing you these signs, then you know they're already showing you who they're gonna be. And it's a difficult thing because you have to be honest with yourself right now based on this video, you're watching this right now, okay? Is the problem you or is it that person, right? If the problem is you, you might not be giving value on those calls. If you're not even asking for the sale on the call, then it's not your fault. Like, these people aren't taking advantage of you. You just didn't even ask, right? It's like I have a client, average tax prep fee on a business return, 500 bucks. I was like, well, did you even ask for? 1500 no okay well obviously you didn't get it because nobody says okay your price is 500 hmm nah let's do 1500 right so if you're not even asking and you're you're telling them the process is to send them an invoice and review their quickbooks file and send them an engagement letter and wait five days and all, you're telling that process then that's your fault so you've got to change but either way you've got to change you've got to change by showing more value on the call you've got to change by asking for the decision right then you've got to change by setting boundaries and letting them know this is the way that it goes and holding them to it 
And honestly, when you do that, it's actually a really fun part of the process. And it can give you a sense of being in control of your business, getting clients to work on your terms, building a business where you can actually start to grow it. Because when clients start to work on your terms and your process, you can have some consistency and some stability in process, which allows you to hire people, get everything going the right way. Rather than every client you sign up, it's just like some custom bear hug. Like, oh, we'll do whatever we can for you. <laughs> right? You don't want that. And so I hope this video was helpful. Um, you know, these are the problems that you know, sometimes I get messages from people that watch these videos and they say, Andrew, people are dealing with that? Like, that's a problem? I can tell you right now, if you're a person watching this that's saying, oh, that's obvious. Like, I obviously asked for the first payment, first call. Like, I go through. I don't send that. I don't let people string me around. You know, so there are many of you guys that aren't thinking that. You're thinking, that is my problem. That is what I've struggled with. I haven't been able to show the value, assert that value, command that decision, get the client to go there, get them to work on my terms. And I can tell you so many people think, oh, if I just had another tool, if I just had another thing, if I just had another little workflow tool that could just increase productivity by that little 1.5%, just then I would just get my business where I wanted to go, just right there, that one point. Most of the time, the problems are much bigger than that. And they start in the very first interaction with the client. That's where the expectations are set. That's where the price is set. That's where the scope is set. That's where the packaging is set. That's where all of their view of the value is set. And if that is broken, then it just puts this massive weight down on the entire relationship and it's very hard to bring it back around so i've spent years working on this we've worked with over eight eight thousand people over eight thousand people have been our, our paying customers we've had about 3200 higher end customers and so if you're interested in working on some of these problems right showing the value setting the expectations getting people to make a decision quicker getting the prices up setting the engagement off on the right foot and then we go through and work on kickoff calls and onboarding and nurture and upsell and retention and all that but if you want to work on this with us, I put an application below this video. Once you fill that out, you'll come on a call with us. You'll see how our process works. You know, what I like about our process is we're, we're often helping people with showing the value. So why don't you come in and watch how we show you the value, right? Wouldn't that be interesting? You just sign up for the, you apply, go through below and see if it's worth it. See if it's worth it. And I can tell you right now, I mean, particularly if you have a tax and accounting firm in the U.S. doing something, bookkeeping, accounting, tax preparation, tax planning, CFO, controller services, and you already have a business, 50, 100,000, 500,000, a million, two million in sales, it's going to be worth your time even if we don't decide to go for it. So go ahead and below this video, fill out, fill out a time. You'll get on the phone with me or somebody from my team and we'll walk you through everything we do. You'll see how we show the value. And if it aligns with you and what you want to do, then we'll go on and do some amazing things together. So I went in and put the application below and I will see you on the other side.